Okay, next is 5b. Uh, we have log base 2 of 3 minus x. It says they want you to start by drawing in the base graph, which is y equals log base 2 of x. Okay, now, because the 3 is in that position, we did a similar one of this with exponents. We said that if it's in this order where the, a number comes first, we have to switch the order. So what we'll do here is we're going to first switch the order and we'll make it log base 2 of x, negative x plus 3. So the negative still has to go with the x there in that case. And then in the next step, we're going to factor out a negative. So we always have to do this process if you have a negative in front of the x there. So in this case, that would switch the order around and make it x minus 3. So I have a negative inside and I have a x minus 3 afterwards. So this is important. It tells us that we're going to move the graph this time three places to the right. And because we have a negative inside, that's going to be a flip over uh, the vertical axis. So let's start with the base graph. Now the base graph of log base 2 of x, it's going to look real similar to the ln graph. It's going to have a, a vertical asymptote uh, at x equals 0. And it's going to cross the x-axis right there at 1. And it's going to have a same similar shape. So again, you don't have to be exact in this because that's going to require you to plot points. I'm just mainly looking for uh, sketches here. So this, that's what the base graph will look like, real similar to the, to the lnx graph. Okay, now next, uh, we're going to apply the x minus 3. So we're going to do log base 2 of x minus 3. That's going to move the graph, this time, three places to the right. Now, uh, it also moves that vertical asymptote over as well. So the vertical asymptote was at 0. It moves it three places over to here. The x-intercept for the base graph, that also moves three places over to the right. So that's going to cross over at, it was at 1. If you move it three places over, it's now going to cross at, uh, at 3. And the graph itself would be the same shape. It would look like this. We're not applying any, any kind of flips or anything. That means the graph looks the same as the original one. Now this one, uh, let me move this one over a little bit more here. So we're not, not crowding it. Okay, so if I move it over to here, uh, this is now going to be uh, log base 2, and then we're now going to apply the negative on the inside, and this is going to be our uh, final graph. What that negative does is it's going to take our graph now, it basically it's, it's going to pivot about this vertical asymptote. So we're still going to draw in the vertical asymptote line at 3, but the graph itself is going to be reflected over the vertical asymptote. So this point that was here, if we flip it over, it's now going to cross one to the left instead of one to the right. So now it's going to cross here at two and the graph is going to go in the opposite direction. So now the graph is going to look something like this. So that would be what the final graph looks like. Okay. Now the only way you could tell exactly where it crosses the y-axis is if they ask for the y-intercept. If you put in like a zero for x or something like that, then, you, then on a calculator you can figure out what decimal where it crosses. But if it doesn't ask for that, then you can just leave it a uh, general sketch like that one. Okay, now the x-intercept is, we're looking at the final graph where it crosses. It's going to cross at 2. The domain, this time, is going to be from negative infinity all the way up to the dotted line. So from negative infinity to 3, and the 3 has to have a parenthesis on it because, again, we're not including that one because you have a vertical asymptote there. So from negative infinity to 3 is your domain. Vertical asymptote, we just write the equation of your vertical line right there, and it's going to be x is equal to 3, and that answers everything for this question.